Hey guys, how's it going? So let's start by looking at the basic differences from JavaScript and Go. We're gonna look at the primitive data types, strings, how they're different, uh, functions and, and modules. Uh, and then we're gonna cover the rest in the next video. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna start by assuming that you have everything set up. So I don't wanna cover, you know, installing Go and where you're supposed to create your folder. I'm gonna try to leave a link to that in the description of the video so you can follow that tutorial if you have to set everything up from scratch. So follow me to the screen and we'll get started. All right guys, so if you come here, you'll see that I, the first thing I've done is I've created a file called main.go. Main.go is just gonna be the entry point for my application and every file in Go begins with the package keyword to tell the compiler to which package this file belongs. Uh, we're gonna talk about packages just now, but for now, let's say this is gonna be my main package and I'm gonna create a function called main and this is what's gonna run when you run your executable, pretty much like C. I'm just gonna print hello world to the console. Uh, I have my ID set up to automatically import packages and to do auto completion. Let me show you the syntax for importing something in Go. If it's a single package, you just put the strings there and, and it will import. Or if you have more than one thing you wanna import, what you do is you put parentheses and then each line is a package you wanna import. So format or font, strings, operating system package. Go will complain if you have unused imports. So as soon as I save them, you'll see that they'll go away. Okay, so let's run this. To run something without compiling it, if you just wanna run it, you do go run and the file that you want as your main. You'll see here that it'll, it'll print hello world. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about defining variables. I'm gonna define an age variable, which is gonna be of type integer, and I'm gonna assign 30 to it. The compiler is complaining here because uh, this is not being used. So Go will also not let you have variables declared that you don't use anywhere. This is the most verbose way you can define the variable. You can also drop this, and the compiler will infer that this is an integer. The same you could do for like a string. Okay, now age is of type string. So there are two parts to this statement. One, I'm declaring the variable and then I'm initializing it. There's a short form to do this. You can just drop the bar keyword and then you can say, I want to declare with the colon, assign with 30. Now you can use this variable without the colon because it's already been declared. So you can say age equals 25. If you try to put the colon again, Go will complain because he'll say, hey, you already declared this up here. There's, this is not a new variable. So if you ever encounter this error, no new variables on left side of colon assign, that means that you can just drop that. Let's look at some of the data types in Go. Bool is a type for Boolean. You have strings, you have integers of eight bits, 16 bits, 32, 64. If you don't put the number of bits, it'll default to the platforms size. Uh, unsigned integers, you don't have a bit for signs, so this can hold bigger numbers. A run is a Unicode character, because you know that Unicode characters are, it can, they can take a byte or up to four bytes, depending on the character. So floats, 32 and 64, and you have complex numbers. Uh, don't worry about this type. Uh, you're not gonna be using it. Basically, it's if you wanna do low level stuff uh, in Go. So ifs in Go don't have parents surrounding it. So in JavaScript, you would normally do something like this. Not in Go. The rest is pretty obvious to you if you're a JavaScript programmer. Uh, else if, again, no parents and else. Something I wanna show you is that the switch statement can also behave like an if like this. Here, I have switch with no condition. I'm not switching on any variable, I'll show you now. Each case can be a condition. So these two things are equivalent. So you can use the switch case like, like this. Of course, can, you can also do something like switch on, uh, let's declare name, case. So, okay, so this code doesn't make any sense, but I'm just illustrating things here. Notice that there's no break in between the case. There's no break here. Uh, you don't have to, it's not gonna cascade to the next case if you forget the break. Now that you know how to declare variables and use conditionals, let's look at functions for a minute. I'm going to create a greet function, which is gonna return the greeting, hi, and the person, earth, is gonna print things. So func is the keyword you use to define a function. This is the name, greeting is a string, and person a string. And for now, this is gonna print to console the greeting and the person. Because these are both strings, I can just omit this. It doesn't mean that greeting doesn't have a type. It just means that greeting and person are both strings. So it's gonna take the last type. And I can specify the return type, which can be a string, or you can return multiple things. 
uh, which is the way that Go does error handling. Okay, so let's do a little silly example. I'm gonna return a string and an error. And then I'm gonna return the result. And I'm gonna return nil for the error. Nil means null. So I'm returning these two things. In this case, I'm never returning an error. It's always gonna be nil, but there you could, we're gonna have this when you're trying to open a file or something that you might return an empty string or whatever, zero type or, and then you return the error. So let's use this function. Remember this is not printing anymore, so we have to store this. Okay, so I'm, remember the colon, I'm declaring these two variables and I'm assigning them to these two things that this function return. So then I'm gonna do if, error is not nil, you're gonna see this a lot in Go. Then I'm gonna print error encountered. If there's no error, which in, in this case there will never be, we're just gonna print the loop greeting. Now we'll, let's run this. You'll see that it still works. So you can ret return multiple things. I just, I returned two here, but you could return you know, an int and the error. And then let's do the length of the greeting and the error. You'll see that now it complains because I have to receive every single thing that the function returns. So let's do length and the error. Okay, and it's complaining now because I'm not using it in anywhere. So let's use it. Okay, let, you have to receive everything that the function returns, but let's say you didn't care. Like I don't care about the length. If you don't care about it, you can do underscore. And underscore means just ignore this. Okay, so we don't have this anymore. Uh, let's talk about importing and exporting things now. But first, of course, we need to talk about packages. So let's create one. Greetings, greet.go. So I created a greetings folder with a greet.go file. So in JavaScript, you're used to importing files. For instance, when you import a module from node modules, you import the index file, and then that will import all the files, and you can export something or you can keep it private to the package. So a package in Go is a folder with a bunch of files. In this case, I only have one. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be a package called greetings. And I'm gonna copy over that function here. And let's clean it up a little bit. Let's just return a string. Okay. Okay, so now the way that Go decides whether something is exported or kept private to the package is by looking at the case of the first letter in the word. So for instance, this is not exported. So anyone that wants to import the greetings package will not be able to use the greet function. Now, if you want to export it, what you do is you make this uppercase. Uh, in this case, now if we go back to our file and we do greetings.greet, hi, uh, this returns a string. So let's look at this. This is the path to my greetings folder, which is relative to my Go search root. So because we're not using Go modules, Go modules is something you're gonna learn in a later episode. Uh, we're putting everything inside Go root. So let's look at where I am here. This is my home folder. I have a Go folder inside that, and I have a source folder. And every project I create is inside this source folder. The imports are relative to that. So Go, so Go for JS Devs is the folder, and inside that I have a greetings folder. This works now, and you see that it says hi audience. Uh, so, okay, so if you're coming from JavaScript, you'll see, okay, but this is a function here, and it has a capital letter, that's kind of like for classes. Like this is not gonna look great to you at first. In fact, look at the print line function. Uh, it's, it starts with a capital P. So this is gonna, you're gonna mm, maybe bark at this a little bit in the beginning. What's cool about this is that whenever you see a function being used, you don't have to go to the definition to see if it's exported or not. You have to be looking around, you know, in JavaScript like, is it exported somewhere like at the bottom or did you export this? Did you not export this? And if you're in Java, is it private? Is it protected? Here you can just look at the name of the function and automatically know if it's exported or not, which is really cool. This does not only apply for functions, of course, if I wanted to create a, for instance, constant pi, this is terrible code, but let's say that I put it like this. This pi is not exported. Okay, so if I come here and I wanna use greetings, dot, it only has greet, right? But if we now go back and we make this uppercase, you'll see now that I can use pi, okay? So this is packages and how you keep things private and public or 
export it or not export it. A quick word about functions. Uh, this is the only syntax for functions in Go. You don't have arrow functions or like shorthand versions. You can have anonymous functions when you pass them as parameters. So you can have something like this, but we'll see that in a future video. There's also such a thing called naked returns. I am going to defer on that for later because it's not, it's something you shouldn't use every day and there's no point in telling you about it now. Okay, so just a couple more things before we go. We can declare and assign multiple things in a single line. So we can do C, Python, Java, true, false, Hi, and it will assign each one of these to each variable. The last two things we're gonna cover today are the fact that variables are initialized to their zero value. So in JavaScript, if you do something, or in TypeScript, let's say you do something like let name string like this, and you leave it at that, name is null or undefined. Uh, the same for whatever variable you declare. Here, they're initialize in their zero value. So i is gonna be zero, f is gonna be zero, b is gonna be false, this is gonna be an empty string, and pointers, we're gonna have a video about pointers, pointers are gonna be nil. Okay, so let's run this. Remember that nil is nulls equivalent in Go. So this is an important distinction, that things are initialized to their zero value. Our last thing is looping. Okay, so in Go, you only have four. i equals zero, less than 10, print line, we we'll run this, zero to nine, okay? So in Go, each one of these classes is optional. If you drop all of them, you have an infinite loop, okay? This will run forever. If you drop the first and the last, this is the same as a, for, as a while loop, okay? This is effectively the same. So I have to initialize i here to zero and do I plus plus. Uh, you can have any condition here, you know? While the read is not, you know, end of file, do something, you know? So you don't have a while keyword. Look, while is not even a keyword. Everything is four, either with all three clauses of the four or a single clause. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, so in the next video, we're gonna look at structs. The closest thing in JavaScript to structs are objects. They're not quite the same. They're actually different concepts, but we'll look at them. Go is not object-oriented, but you can have sort of methods in your structs. We'll look at that too. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next one.